Hey, and welcome to another twin motion video. In this video, we're going to look at the gizmo in twin motion. The gizmo is something that's going to allow us to move objects, rotate, scale, really do anything kind of translating, moving anything to an object that we might want to do in twin motion. It's very simple, but there's a number of ways that you can use it. And there's some also different ways that we can start to copy and move objects. And we're going to go over that as well and the impacts that that would have on your project. So before we get into it, if at any point in this video, you happen to learn something, if you wouldn't mind, please demolishing that like button it really helps me out so much. Also, most of you are not subscribed. So if you wouldn't mind, please change that phase of the subscribe button to existing. That always helps me out so much. Getting into it now, we're looking at the gizmo. So what is the gizmo? The gizmo is, if I were to select an object, it is this, it, let's call it coordinate system looking type of object here. And it's it's got different things that I can do with it. As I hover over it, I've got arrows that go in the X, Y, and Z axis. I've got a little rotation here, and I've got this bubble here in the middle. So this allows us to, you know, first move objects because I can move it using these different planes. I can simply drag this chair up. I can drag it left or right. I can drag it forward along these different axes. It's pretty simple in that regard. The same works for rotating. I can simply rotate the chair this way. Very simple. And you might notice that I'm, I'm actually moving in increments of five. And you can set that up if you go into the edit preferences. You can see angle snap. And I have that set at five. I think that's the default. So just kind of know that. So at, at this point, you might see that there are some number values whenever I start to move the chair. And these are related to the units that you set. And I have, I have twin motion set to feet. So you might want a little more precision here. This kind of drives me crazy if I'm trying to get something pretty precise when it comes to something getting to a specific location. Maybe I want a chair in a very specific place or I need to move it a very specific dimension. So how can you do that? Well, before I even click and drag... I can just simply hover over there and we can see that as I hover, I can I see 0, 0.0. So at this point, now I can start typing. And so if I put in four and then I hit enter, I can get that chair moving over in that direction four feet. And that's great. Very simple. And this works with any of them. If I do two feet above, I can even rotate 26 degrees if I want. Works all the same. I believe even negative numbers work. Even negative numbers do work, and that would work anyway. So this is this that's great. You know, it's very simple. If I am if I'm clicking and dragging on this kind of a surface here, a part of the gizmo, I'm gonna I'm just gonna move on this flat surface there, and that's fine. Now, something I've seen a lot is maybe this ground plane or a floor you have is elevated or something like that, and maybe so maybe you have a chair that comes in at this point and you it's you know a foot or two above the plane that you want the chair actually on well that's where this center or core of the gizmo it comes into play you can actually click that point and if you see i'm hovered over it and i've i've got all all portions of the gizmo highlighted i can click and drag this and now it immediately snaps to the location that i'm I would like. In this case, I've, I'm snapped and I'm hovering over this floor. So it easily snaps to the floor. And that's great. That's very simple to use. It's it, it gives me the peace of mind that the chair is on the floor. And that's what I want. That's really what I want, obviously. So that's great. And so you might say, well, maybe I want to rotate the chair or scale the chair. How would I do that? Well, in here at the bottom, there's this translate tool. And if I click and hold, I can see I've got move, rotate, and scale. All of those are a part of the gizmo tool. So I can click rotate and now I have more rotational options for moving or rotating this object. I can you see I can rotate it that way, rotate it this way, all the different options for rotating that I might want to. And the same goes for scale. If I change this to scale, I can scale in different dimensions, scale vertically, scale in one axis or the other, or I can choose to scale from the center and this will scale everything up evenly and proportionally. Of course, I can also put in my own scale that I might want, maybe 2.25 times. I can hit enter and I can see that, that 
the chair is scaled up every, in every direction 2.25 times that size. So a quick shortcut into changing these is instead of having to come in here and select which one is if I'm on the move by default, I can simply hit tab and you can see that this icon changes from move to rotate to scale, move to rotate to scale. And you can also see the gizmo itself changes. So it's a, a very quick way in, in changing that. And without you having to come in here and select which one you want, you can just simply tab to the correct gizmo that you'd like to use. So that's great. And so that's essentially the gizmo. Now, what can we do with the gizmo? Well, I'm going to show you in my graph what I have got here. And I've just, I've just got this one chair and my starting ground. Really nothing special, nothing else to look at here. But we can start to do some things when we use the gizmo to move this object. So if I move the object, nothing happens. Now, if I were to hold shift while I move this chair, you could see that while I move it, that the zero is not displaying numbers. And that's because when I let go, I get this copy menu that comes up. And for this, it's essentially copying the object. And it's a matter of how I'm going to copy it. So I can copy it as an instance or as an actual copy. I'll get more into that in just a second. But I can supply the number. Maybe I want four chairs. And then the specific spacing. Maybe I want actually four feet. So this is where I'm putting my spacing in. Now at this point, instance versus copy. Now we're going to see the difference here. But instance is taking the properties of that first chair and then translating it a number of times. And if you're familiar with arrays in Revit or in Rhino or other program modeling programs, this is the exact same way. Whether using instance or copy, we are creating an array. And that's what this is. Now you can just you can just make this one and so you're simply just moving it over one and you're copying it once. So it's just a plain old copy. But if I put in four, I'm creating an array of four. So an instance being the the chairs are going to all share the same properties and copy. It's going to be an actual copy or a new chair of that. So let's give, let's show you more of what that is uh, after we make this copy. So I'm going to hit instance. I'll have four feet apart and I'll have four of them. I'll hit okay. And so now we've got four chairs. And if I come over and I expand my browser here, I can see clearly that I've got those chairs. And so I've got the five chairs and we can see them all right here. The gizmo still comes into play really nicely because I can select a chair and do everything I want. I can also hold control and choose more than one chair. And you can see as I choose more than one chair, the gizmo is relocated and it's just relocated to the center of all those chairs. But I have the same controls over all of these chairs and all these selections as I would if it were just one object. And I can, not only can I select them over here using control, but I could use shift and select all of them at once. That's great, very simple, and I can make those translations with the gizmo just like I could before with one object. So given that these are instantly, or instantly copied, which is a terrible way of putting it, but given that they are instances, all these four chairs are instances of this single chair, they're in a way linked together. And we know that they're linked together from these colors here at the right. So if you look at these colors here at the right, we can see what we're looking at is, you know, they're all the same color. They're all yellow. Great. That's simple enough. Now, what does that actually tell us? Well, that tells us that they're linked and it's not so much a link as more as they're, they're looking at each other, they're referencing each other, something like that. So how can we prove this? Well, I can go to my eyedropper here at the bottom, material picker, and let's just choose this material. And so I've got this leather material, black leather material, and I want to just change the color. I'm going to change this to a lighter gray and we can clearly see that I just selected the material off this one chair yet the color from all the chairs was now changed. And why is that? Again, that is because they're all considered to be instances of this single chair. Imagine you have one chair and if we're talking Revit, imagine you have a type and you place five or 500 chairs of the same type everywhere and you make a type change, you, you change the material of that chair in the type properties. We're, it's doing this exact same thing here. It looks a bit different in, in the how that it's organized because it's a different type of program, but in a sense, it's the same thing. And so it's, it's linked together. Now, we can take this one step further, and maybe what we wanna do is actually 
unlink this. Maybe we're we're done with this chair and we, we want all these to stay together. We can come over here to this chair while it's selected, right click it, and then simply break instance. So now at this point, you can see that the color associated to that chair is it's gone, that yellow's gone. And now if I were to, again, pick this chair, change the color here, let's say to a red, and then I hit OK, now that chair is distinctly different than the other chairs. And that's because, like we said before, the instance is now broken. Now I can do the same thing, and I'm going to take this chair, I'm going to translate this over, and I'm instead of instance, I'm going to choose copy. I'm going to, again, copy, uh, choose four, and then have them four feet apart. Okay, and as soon as I hit OK, all these chairs are going to look the same. And it makes sense because what did we do? We just copied them. Now, the thing I want you to look at is I no longer see those yellow lines over here. There's no colors associated to these chairs, which leads me to believe they're not associated to one another or not associated to the chair that I copied it from. I'm going to choose the material picker again. Let's choose this chair and change the color to a blue. And as soon as I do that, I can see that I only have that chair that's now blue. And that is because, again, that chair is no longer, it's not associated to any particular link. It, it's its own chair. So it's, it's, it's got its own material, its own everything. Okay, that's great. And again, the gizmo tool works all the same. I can go ahead and select all of these. I can even choose to copy all of these. Let's go ahead and make this an instance and then make that spacing 10 feet. Hit OK. That's great. Now, this is going to look very confusing because while we just talked about all of the linking and all that and that we certain chairs weren't linked, because I've now taken all of those chairs and linked them via the this copy that I've made, we get all these colors over here. And that's, that's just because we selected them all and we dragged it and we created a new instance. And so you can see that all these chairs are in a way linked together. So this chair and this chair are linked and it makes perfect sense because of where it came from. I translated this chair from that chair, it makes sense. And just like before, the four of these chairs here have the same color as these four chairs do as well. And so changing any one of these colors would then affect the color of all the chairs because they're linked. And unless I break the instance, it's not gonna happen. So that's going to do it for the gizmo tool in Twinmotion. We looked at all the different properties we can use for translating and rotating scale and move and all that that comes with the gizmo tool and how we can control objects with the gizmo. But not only that, with the gizmo, we can choose to move these elements and copy them in a way that it's just a copy or it's a, 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 an instance and it's linked in a way. So that is what we covered in this video. If you have any questions, leave those in the comment section below. I'll be sure to get to all of them. Also, if you did happen to learn something, if you wouldn't mind liking the video, demolishing the like button really helps me out a lot. Can't thank you enough who have liked the video. It helps me out. Please consider changing the phase of that subscribe button to existing. I know that a lot of you have not. So that also helps me out a lot, and I really appreciate that. that and that ensures me that you are liking the content and enjoying this and getting something out of it. So I sure hope to see you in the next video. Have a wonderful day and thanks for watching.